اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ویلکم اگین فار ٹو ڈیز کلاس ٹو ڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس اباؤٹ الاندلوس ایکچولی سم ایسپیکٹس آف اندلوس اینڈ دس از ون آف مائی فیورٹ ون وی آر گوئنگ بیک اے فیو سینچریز ٹو لک بیک ایف یو ریمبر آئی ہیو مینشن دیٹ امید Umayyads had three main lines of rulers. One was established by Muawiyah, which was continued by his son Yajid and his first, uh, Yajid the first and so on, all right? And then the next, next one was founded by Al-Marwan ibn Al-Hakam. And the line of rules, rulers we, were, we are going to talk about today is Abdul Rahman the first. So he was the third founder of Umayyad dynasty. but it didn't happen in Syria. It happened in Spain or Al-Andalus. And Al-Andalus is forgotten both Muslims and non-Muslims. And it is very sad that many of us, even Muslims, we don't know that it is one of the most glorious states of Muslims. It was a very ad advanced and a dominant civilization in Europe that time. And most of the Europe was in a very dark ages at that time. So whenever sometimes you read the history books, sometimes this, time span was called dark ages by European historians because for them it was dark ages. So Spain was the first Muslim land which fell into the hands of non-Muslims and it is very important we study the history and learn the lessons and benefit from it, from it right? Why are we learning all these history? Just to remember all the names or the years, not only that, it is, yeah, it is important that we know the timeline, we know the people's name and what we have done. But at the same time, as we go, it is important for us to study history because we learn from uh, learn the lessons and we apply or we try our best to um, ourselves to do better and excel. Okay, so inshallah. So let's go back to the reign of Walid ibn Abdul Malik in Syria. That was 1705 AD during the time of Umayyad, okay? When we took the Umayyad, uh, Umayyad empire, we were talking about that one point there was a emperor, his name was Walid ibn Abdul Malik. So he was the son of Abdul Malik. So 705 AD, that in his time, the Ummah expanded faster than ever before. Okay, so even, even some it, it is told that during the time of Walid ibn Abdul Malik, Ummah expanded even more than during the time of Umar bin, Ab Umar bin Khattab. Okay, so as a result, they ended up taking over part of Europe. Okay, so Musa ibn Nusayr, he was a chief commander of Walid ibn Abdul Malik. He brought justice in North Africa and Morocco. All right, so that time King Roderick was a king, uh, he was a tyrant and a Visigoth. He used to rule Spain very unjustly, okay? Even, even the Christians could not handle him anymore. The Christians and the Jewish of the, this part of the world asked the Muslims in North Africa for help. So they wanted, we, we have seen this over and over in history. Whenever you have a justice, unjust, unjust ruler, and you people are suffering, they always look for leadership in a different place. Even though in North Africa, it was a Muslim, uh, Muslim empire and Muslim rulers, but they have seen, they have heard that how it was, North Africa was ruled under Muslim rulers. So they were seeking for freedom or some justice in their life. So Tariq ibn Ziyad, if you remember Tariq ibn Ziyad, he came to help them. He was the, he was from the Umayyad commander during the time of Walid ibn Abdul Malik. So he came to help them out with a large army. And also, if you remember, uh, Tariq ibn Ziyad was Musa ibn Nusayr's free slave. I need to mention one thing here that, well, I think I already mentioned it. Like Spain, we know now, was not the same territory 2000 years before. Territory changes with time as it goes. So when we are talking about Al-Andalus, we mean the whole Iberian Peninsula, including Portugal, 
I actually uh, apologize. I forgot to add a map today. I don't know how I forgot that, but anyway, uh, next class, inshallah, I'll add that. So Walid and his brother Suleiman, what happened that after taking over, so interesting thing, Tariq ibn Ziyad, what he did, he, when he took his soldiers, a lot of his soldiers, okay? Um, so a great battle happened, mm, was fought between Tariq. It was like almost 12,000 Muslims. Some say uh, 7,000, some say 12,000. But anyway, a large amount of army. So they all, so they were against 100,000 equipped Christian soldiers. Imagine, okay? 100,000 versus like a 12,000, even 12,000, okay. So the Muslims, they defeated the Christian armies. Tariq ibn Ziyad, he did a trick. What he did, he, he burned all of their own ships so that the soldiers had no choice but to go back. So they had to fight. And actually, a lot of Christians and Jewish also helped Muslims army against King Roderick's army. So it was not only Muslims who were fighting, but also Christians and Jewish also helped them. And anyway, so Tariq was later joined by the Musa. They marched through Spain, conquering cities. They signed peace treaties with many cities, assuring them of religious freedom and safety of the Christians and their properties. And Musa and Tariq ordered their soldiers not to kill old men, women, or children, except those who rose in arms to fight against the Muslims. So the first ruler of Spain was Abdul Aziz, son of Musa ibn Nusayr. And this marked the beginning of Muslim rule in Spain. All right, so I, th I, I think I covered, yes. He burnt all his ships so that they couldn't retreat. He defeated Roderick's army. Here I say 7,000, but some, somewhere it says 12,000, 7,000, 8,000. So maybe the Muslims were 7,000 and extra people were uh, Christians and the Jewish. So the first governor uh, of Islamic Spain was Musa's son, Abdul Aziz. And Christians of Spain loved Abdul Aziz's justice and many people converted to Islam that time. Okay, so early Spanish governors, Musa ibn Nusayr did not get to rule Spain. Uh, he was tortured by the new King Suleiman ibn Abdul Malik. Remember uh, uh, in, this, in Syria, Umayyads were that time, Umayyad dynasty was happening. So uh, when Walid, passed away, his brother Suleiman took over and he wanted all the commanders who were under Walid, he wanted all of them to be killed. So Tariq ibn Ziyad was tortured and imprisoned. Um, and then the Nusa, Musa ibn Nusayr, so they all got killed and tortured so he couldn't rule or do anything. And Abdul Aziz ibn Musa was just governor. He too was an assassinated on the orders of King Suleiman. So the next two governors were very unpopular and disposed of very quickly. And under Sama ibn Malik, during the reign of Omar ibn Abdul Aziz, Spain began to prosper. So we're gonna talk about that uh, very soon. Before that, I just wanted to talk about that. So what was happening that time? When Umayyad took over Spain, that is, they were already, by the time the Mayans started to fighting each other for power, if you remember, they were so the Spain were very neglected, okay, and eventually, what happened that they couldn't focus more on Spain because it was far. Definitely, it was far from Syria. It was in Europe. They couldn't have a good hold of there. So when Abdul Aziz came, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz came, he stopped, uh, he, uh, he stopped the offensive jihad, right? If you, uh, if you can re uh, recollect your memory that he stopped the jihad, offensive jihad for a little bit because he thought we were taking over a lot of lands, but we are not developing ourselves. So then temporarily he stopped it. So he put Sama, Ibn, uh, uh, Sama Ibn Malik for the census in charge of Spain. So 
what was the census for? Because it is a new land that the Mayas don't know. They don't know how many mountains there. They don't know how many people there. They don't know how many cities there. They don't know. They don't know much about that city or that country, that land. So he wanted to know. So if he wanna, so he he started that uh, census. He wanted to know more about it. But then we know that he didn't. Umar bin Abdul Aziz did not uh, rule for long, right? He was poisoned by his cousins. So any new governor were always coming and fighting each other. They were not very successful in Spain. And there were always fights between France and Spain happening. France is just beside uh, uh, Spain and that area. So they, the, the Christians in this France, they're trying to push, push and then take over, take it back. So, we are going to go back back and forth a little bit with the Maya dynasty because it is one of the third dynasty Maya dynasty that's going to be established in Spanish so in Spain. So we need to a little bit reconnect too much with the Maya dynasty. So the Dinar assassination, the early, early uh, every single descendant of Umayyad, right? When um, When Abbasid took over, if you remember properly what he did, he called for a dinner, right? He called for a dinner for Umayyad princes. princes. He wanted all, all the Umayyad princes to come. And then he was offering a peace treaty or a peace. It was, it was not a really uh, true. He wanted them to Who was King Suleiman? Okay, I'll talk. I'll talk about that later. Suleiman was he was his brother of Walid uh, in the time of Umayyad dynasty. Later on, so dinner assassination. Every single descendant of Umayyad were murdered on that day by Abbas Asafa. Okay, he was the first emperor of Abbasid dynasty. Asafa means the butcher. So he used to call. He had the name. Safa, okay so he he killed everybody so only abdul rahman okay abdul rahman the first he was able to escape he was able to escape now there is a conflict of information some book says he was 20 years old when he escaped some book says he was 12 years old when he fled to fled the abbasid persecution Okay, I don't know. I like to believe he was 12 years old. He was a teenager. I don't know, like preteen. Okay, so I'll leave it up to you guys. So whatever it is, he was very young. That's at least we can think about it. He was very young. So his mother was from, he, his mother was a barber. Uh, and he was from, uh, she was from North Africa. So he, he, he escaped and he went to North Africa. He was given the nickname immigrant. So Abdul Rahman the one, he was given the nickname immigrant. So for six years, Abdul Rahman was on the run. He went into exile. He changed his name. He was in disguise. He was running one place to another place. It's like a movie. People can make actually a good movie on him, like how he survived. Because Abbasids knew he had escaped. And they were spying on him. Because of that, he moved very far from Abbasids. And he makes his way to Morocco. He learns that the people of Spain are not happy. And the average person is still loyal to the Mayas. Right, so people, he, he learned about it, that the, okay, even the Basits came, people are still loyal to the Mayas and people are not happy how the Spain was neglected for over years and years. So eventually, Abdul Rahman I was able to fight with Yusuf al-Fihri um, because Yusuf ibn Abdul Rahman al-Fihri, he was the last governor before Spain became independent. So he was appointed by the Abbasi rulers. Okay. Abdurrahman the first, let me talk about here. So this is a picture of uh, Cordoba Mosque in Spain. It is still there. Okay. Abdurrahman ibn Muawiyah. So he came from the chain of Muawiyah. 
he was the only survivor of a Mayan massacre and went to exile. He gained support in Spain and set himself up as opposition to Yusuf al-Fihri. A series of battles took place between them and Abdurrahman emerged victorious and declared Spain an independent Umayyad state. So he ruled, he ruled 32 years, which was a period of growth and glory of Islamic Spain. Spain grew into a powerful state during his reign. Okay, uh, this is just, yeah, this is just a slide that he was, uh, I like to think he was 12 years old. Um, and do you know that Muslim rule in Spain lasted for 800 years? And the Christian of Spain had a large number of slaves. When Abdul Aziz announced that the slaves accepting Islam would be free men, not slaves, many embraced Islam. Okay. And Abdul Rahman, the one who built the Cord oh, sorry, um, spelling mistake, it's going to be Cordoba, not Cor. Cordonova. Uh, it's going to be Cordoba. There is no N. Mosque, and it is very old. It is that old. The mosque is still there. Like the building is still there. If you go and visit, you will find it. So now, Abdurrahman ibn Moya dynasty, his dynasty lasted 290 years. Okay? His dynasty lasted 290 years. It was really a time of productivity and the glory. And Abdurrahman III, I'll talk about later on another Abdurrahman. So Abdurrahman III and the Harun al-Rashid in, uh, in Abbasid's Abbasid dynasty, Harun al-Rashid and his descendants in Abbasid also having golden age of Islam. So these two were happening parallelly in two different empire. Inshallah, when I talk about next week, uh, golden age of Islam, uh, Islamic era empire, I will focus more on why it was golden age okay so that we can we can uh, collect together uh, maya and abbasids and try to couple them and then talk talk about them inshallah i'll do it in a separate class so now you might think that who should we support now because abbasids they killed the umayyad and they were murdered so clearly they killed the umayyads and then they they were murderers they killed all the umayyad princes and all the Abbasids, also now Abbasids see Abdul Rahman as a rebel who escaped and established his own empire. Now, but then Abdul Rahman thinks he is bringing back his own family names. So this is this is politics. Okay, all I can say this is politics, and it is hard for us to take sides, right? So interestingly, what happened that Abbasids let let him go after a while because Asafa died. Uh, Abbas Asafa, he died, and his name was um, Asafa means the butcher. So when he died, so both civilizations, uh, Abbasids in this in Syria, and Umayyads in Spain or in Al Andalus, so they were both at peace. They had open borders; people could travel and move and do their business freely among these two Islamic empire. And this is the time when the Golden Age started. So if anybody wants it, wanted to live in Spain for a while and they decided they didn't need a passport or a visa or anything, they could just go and start living in Syria or people in Syria thought, okay, I'm gonna move into the Portugal. So they just moved into Portugal. So they had a free entry between two lands. So after 150 years from the birth of Islam, imagine Muslims from two empires were the superpowers in the world. It is a miracle of Allah. This is unparalleled in history. And this, this should make us ponder and think. There is a lot of darkness in our history. We know that, but it has also glory. It has also glory in our history too. So we didn't, this was all happening 750, 740 in that era. That was just 150 years after birth of Islam. Now, so Hisham ibn Abdul Rahman. So then Abdul Rahman died, and then Hisham ibn Abdul Rahman came. He was the son of Abdul Rahman, and he ruled for eight years. He was a very just ruler. He was a very pious, pious and a smart ruler. He had the benefit that his cousins were not trying to kill him, unlike uh, Umar bin Abdul Aziz, right? So Cordoba Mosque, 
started its construction during the time of Abdul Rahman the one, it's it's a majest it's a majestic building. Even though the Christians, when they took over Al Andalus, they couldn't even destroy it while they were destroying all other mosques when they took over Spain many years later. Rather, they turned turn into a church. So Hisham completed the construction of the famous Cordova Masjid, which took like a 10 years. Okay, if you visit, you will see, you will still go and see massive complex. It has a it had a library, uh, it has like a musalla that can accommodate thousands of people to pray. And Cordova city had like a university, it had college, it was a symbol of power of a civilization. Okay, so he, he and Hisham was known for his righteousness. He was a just ruler, but he faced opposition from his brothers too, who wanted the throne. However, it was not as bad like uh, uh, Abbasids, what was happening over there. Anyway, so Umayyad Spain continued to flourish under him. So what happened next? Umayyad state. So Al-Hakam ibn Hisham ruled for 26 years. Okay, so who was Al-Hakam ibn Hisham? Al-Hakam or Al-Hakim? Actually, it's going to be Al-Hakim, I guess. Anyway, Al-Hakam ibn Hisham, uh, he was the son of Hisham. He ruled for 26 years. So this is the pre period when Umayyad consolidated their power in Spain. So what is what do we mean by consolidated? It means that even in the time of Abdurrahman I and Hisham ibn Abdurrahman, this two time, even though it was flourishing and it was glorious time of Islamic era, However, there are still a bit of rebels here and there, okay? There are a little bit of fights here and there, a little bit of fights over there. However, by the time of uh, Al-Hakam ibn Hisham, this time, he was able to just consolidate, like a, um, diminish all the rebel groups by in his time. So Abdul Rahman ibn Al-Hakam, so now, this is uh, this is Abdul Rahman the third. So he's gonna be Abdul Rahman the third, the son of Al Hakam. He was one of the greatest rulers of Islamic Spain, and he ruled for thirty years. So how come they were ruling for this long, like twenty six years and thirty years, and you can see like you know many years because they had longer healthy lives in Spain that time. Healthcare increased greatly. Spain was leading to better quality life and people were really happy and the rebels were not there. They were not fighting with others. Like in, in, inside, there was no civil war happening. So the ruler had a longer life and they ruled for longer time. Now, Muhammad ibn Abdul Rahman, another just ruler, he ruled for 34 years. Okay. Munzir ibn Muhammad ruled for just for two years and poisoned by his brother Abdullah. Now, so this is the first time the people are not happy in Spain because all these years, like a 20 years and 26 years and eight years and 34 years, so all these years, people were not used to of, uh, used to of having this kind of internal conflict. So they were not happy by the time when Abdullah poisoned his brother. So riots started, revolt started to rise. However, still Abdullah was able to be in power for 24 years. Then the Khalifa of Spain passed the, great, uh, the grandson of Abdullah. He was Abdul Rahman III. Abdul Rahman III, he reestablished the reign. He was a very righteous man and he picked up the Islamic civilization of Spain. And he ruled for 50 years i think it would be 50 years why does it say 15 okay hisham ibn hakam he was too young to rule and spain had split it into okay i'm, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later i will hold on there before i get go, go to the last topics let's talk about a little bit uh, different uh, different points so what happened during the time of Abdul Rahman III? He built Islamic wonder, Madinat uh, Madina, Madina al-Zahra. 
He was the greatest ruler of the history of Islamic history. People from different lands were migrating to Spain. Within 300 years, the rapid growth of Islam was there amazing. Only 20% of them were non-Muslims. It happened in Europe before, right? It can happen again. So that's why these days we experience a lot of Islamophobia. Because from 10% to 80% of the population became Muslims within 400 years in Europe that time. Even the Christians living in that time in Spain were influenced by Islam. It was such a diverse society with Arabs, with African immigrants, with na native Spanish people, and the Spanish language still retained some of the Arabic words. If you, if you, I don't know if you want to, I think one of you know Spanish here. Some of the words, their roots are still in Arabic because it is so influenced. They don't even probably know. If you ask them sometimes that where this name come from, you will see that they have names Salma or Ali in their name. So they will say it's just from my culture. But actually, because Al-Andalus had a unique culture, this was fascinating. Okay. And during the time of Abdul Rahman III, Muslims and Christians and Jewish, they were all treated with kindness. Every piece of land in Al-Andalus was cultivated and beautiful gardens were seen everywhere. A network of roads and highways connected the kingdom. Police patrols were used to ensure the protection of the people. A postal system that depended on fast running horses was put in place to deliver mail as well as news around the country. Okay, and orphanages were set up to take care of the orphans and ensure they get, uh, they got good education and hospitals treated the sick at the expense of government. So people didn't have to pay for their hospitals. The government used to take care of that. So it was like, like a dream, like a dream time. So in terms of um, Sharia perspective, so Sharia perspective, so fiqh, fiqh developed there also very unique because the fiqh varies culture to culture. The basic principles of the Sharia ruling will be there. However, the fiqh can vary culture to culture, depending on what kind of food you are eating in that culture, what kind of dress you are wearing in that culture, what kind of house you're building, how you're interacting with people. So that time, the Maliki jurists were based on unique cultures. Um, could to be even, even a Arabi who really developed their ideas of fiqh based on that area. So this is why we see that Christians in Spain, they caught up with Muslim cultures. How? They used to learn Arabic languages. They used to dress like Muslims, even started to, to do many things like Muslims over there. And I want, all, I want you all to think about it, how the situation is slipped now in this part of the world. A thousand years ago, we were the dominant culture. But then now, a thousand years later, if you think about now, how our situation has slipped, okay? So Jewish, what happened that Jewish people, they were not tolerated, like they were treated badly in Europe, okay? Because the Christians and the Roman Catholics and all these. So many Jewish, they also moved to Al-Andalus because they had the freedom of their religion over there. They had to pay a tax to the government, Jizya, but they were exempted from military service in, in return. And then however, the majority populations were Muslims. And Jewish also is, is used to speak Arabic because that was the international language pretty much because if you want to do well, uh, you have to learn Arabic. Not, uh, yeah, so even Jewish theology flourished in that time due to the freedom of religion. And the golden age of Umayyads in Spain lasted longer than the golden age of Abbasids. Because meantime, Abbasids were getting weak. Abbasids lost Egypt. They lost North Africa to the Fatimids and Isla Isla Ismaili and Shia dynasty. So Abdurrahman III, he called himself the Khalifa of Muslim world that time. Why? He made himself a rival to the Fatimis because he developed his land in most glorious way. And if I have a chance, I might just touch upon the Fatimis later in the class, I don't know. But the Fatimis were, Isma uh, were uh, Shia and they were not orth Orthodox Sunni Muslims. And Abbasids were 
weak in their power. They were just a puppet. So who is left? The Spain, Abdurrahman III. So he called himself the Khalifa for the Muslim world. Anyway, Abdurrahman III, during his time, the peak of human civilization at that time, and this is, this is just after 300 years after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So what did he do? Okay. And also his time was parallel of the time of Harun al-Rashid and his son Mamun al-Rashid and Suleiman the Magnificent of Ottoman Empire. So he is also, he is compared with all these Harun al-Rashid, Mamun al-Rashid and the Suleiman from the Ottoman Empire. Let's talk about Cordoba. The city of Cordoba had um, 600 libraries in the city. And not only Islamic books, the books on different subjects and some reports that there are like half a million books in one library, half a million books. And it should give you an idea, the priority they gave about reading books at, at 900 AD, that time, okay? And if Europe, people from Europe wanted to be educated, they had to travel to Spain. Even the Pope of the Christians, that time he went there to study and he had to learn Arabic because the books are in Arabic if you want to learn you have to learn Arabic and then you have to read the books and anyone who wanted to study medicine or any science anything they had to learn Arabic they had to learn under Islamic scholars because that's what where that was the peak of civilization that was happening in Spain and the loose that time just like now everyone needs to learn English so it was that time everyone had to learn Arabic. Anyway, so Italy and France opened up universities and translated the books from Arabic meantime. This is when the Dark Ages of Europe started to ending and they started to learning and the Renaissance uh, that was beginning. Okay, so Cordoba Masjid is an architectural marvel. If you, it is, it is an architectural marvel and Abdurrahman also made the palace Madina to Zahra. I already said about it. Uh, eventually they got into the luxury of life and got very comfortable in this dunya. And culturally, economically, politically, scientifically, religiously, like it was such a peak. And Al-Andalus was the most important place on the earth that time. And it is very unfortunate when you see the books nowadays, you only see very few lines about, um, lines about, and it is very shocking. And sometimes I find it very sad that how it just half a page probably covers about Islamic um time there and it doesn't even give all details so anyway and we know that it, it is very easy to fall from the peak when you take things for granted okay so what happened that muslims in in spain they assume that al-andalus will be theirs forever any land muslims conquered by that time it nobody like a non-muslims could not take over back so this is what were their mindset so imagine you would not think to be careful and alert right so this is something that we need to we need to think about that people living in al-andalus over time with the luxury with their they're focusing on books and studies and so many things they became so comfortable that rulers found it hard to rally them to join the army of course, internal problems started to brood as people compete for power and rulers of different states were constantly in battle. I'll talk about uh, the different states thing a little bit later, but just imagine that they were all getting very comfortable. And if you remember, it is a middle age. So what was the pattern of middle age? Either you become the conqueror or you will be conquered. So that was still the trend. Either you start taking over, you fight, you go for offensive jihad, or people will, people will take over you. So all these years, yes, they were focusing, they were flourishing, they were doing a lot of things, but that was the style of the Middle Age that which they stopped. Okay. Now what happened? Not on the loose. Uh, so periods of civil war started. How? What happened that Umayyads <clears throat> Where was I? Okay, yes. So 
obviously it didn't happen all of overnight, right? So losing Spain from the Muslims hand didn't happen overnight. So it's a 30 and four, 400 years process. And we would, we would lose everything by the World War I, but it started eventually. Christian in France, they were still enemies with Muslims. They always saw Muslims as invaders. They never accepted them as their neighbors. They never accepted them like with all these years they still they couldn't accept Muslims over there. So when Muslims fought each other, eventually the Muslims uh, started fighting each other. I think the last topic, Hisham ibn Hakam, he was too young to rule and Spain had split it into many, many, sta many states and Ibn Abi Amir took over as the main ruler of Spain and Umayyad slowly lost the power over next 40 years. So what happened after Abdurrahman III, slowly, slowly, uh, Umayyads, they got divided and the Spain started to become small mini states in between. So as soon as you have, you have divisions, we know what happens. Okay, let's see if there is questions. Uh, okay, I'll, talk, I'll answer all this, inshallah. Yusuf al-Fihri to Fatimi al-Fihri. Oh, that's a good question. Yusuf al-Fihri, no. Yusuf al-Fihri was not Fatimi al-Fihri. He was from Umayyads. Okay, okay, let's move on. Now, what's going on here in Spain? So we are now in a situation when Spain started uh, split it into many states at war and they are at war with each other. And this period became known as Mulk al Tawawif, Kings of Provinces. So, even though next 30 years Al Andalus was a Muslim country, there was a movement that started. Mm. Mm, where is that? I think I missed something here. Anyway, so when Muslims fought each other, uh, the Christians, they stepped in, they plotted against each other and hoping that this will destroy the Muslims. And we still have been seeing this pattern in this time, right? Even now, even in our time, we see that there are a lot of Muslims country, they're allied with another non-Muslims country, and then they fight against another Muslims country and we're in such a mess. So this was the, this was the plot uh, trick of shaitan that time. This is the trick of shaitan this time even. Christians took advantages, yes, as I said, this was challenged by the leader of a Moroccan group, Al Murabitun. So inshallah, I will talk about details about the Al Murabitun in another, uh, another class. However, I'm gonna to touch upon a little bit now here. So his name was Yus um, Yusuf bin Tashfin, Ibn Tashfin. So what he did, so Al Murabit, in English they say Al Muvarid. Okay, al Muvarid era. So he, when he saw that Spain is, Christians are trying to take over Spain and it's because it's split into small, small uh, provinces or small states and they're fighting each other. So he came from, he, he led an army of 60,000 to Spain and defeated the Christian forces. All right. So this is how Spain became a Murabit state. Even though it is a Murabit state, it just transferred from a Maya dynasty to the Murabit dynasty. Uh, it's not dynasty, like a state, but it, it remains still as a Islamic state. So the Murabits were barber rulers from of Morocco and extended their kingdom to, inclu uh, to include Spain. They were crucial in preventing Spain from becoming a Christian country. Their rule, of Spain did not actually last long, as after Ali ibn Yusuf, the Murabits lost all the territories to Muawhids, including Spain. So what is this Mur um, Murabit movement? It is very interesting, but if I get a chance, inshallah, we'll talk about more. But then this started with a single scholar with a small study cir circle, and his students became political leaders, and they established a state in that part of the world. By the time Abbasids became very weak and 
they were neglected, right? So now, Muahid's era, or English, it says Al Muhad era. So Al Muhad dynasty was the rivals of Al Muvarids. Even though both are Muslims, but they were rivals against each other. So they pro promoted their. So when they took over from Al Murabids, are you guys following me? So now Abdul Rahman the third, he, he's he's he passed away. Uh, Umayyad dynasty. They started to rule a little bit, but then they got splitted, and then Christians were plotting against each other. So it was already falling under the Christians' hand. That time, a group called Muravid, they came from Morocco and they helped the Muslims with 60,000 army and they took over Spain and established Islamic era again. However, another Muslim, uh, another Muslim group, al Muahid, they, they were the rival with Muravid. So they took over from Mura, oh, this, all these names are so tongue twister. So they took over now, Murabitun empire did not last long and very small empire. It may be for like a hundred years and it gave Spain a chance to survive and regrow. But that really didn't happen because interestingly, it was not an Arab empire anymore, right? Until, until this point, Abbasids and, and Umayyads, they were all Arab, Arab descendants. They were the descendants from Quraysh. They were all Arab descendants. But this is the first time ever from the Morocco, non-Arabs, but Muslim Muslims, they were the first non-Arab empire founded on Islamic justice and piety. Okay. Um, now they were based on jihad, they were based on da'wah, and it's a sign of a sign that Allah allowed other parts of the world of Muslims to grow. Because the Muslims in Spain got lazy, they got comfortable in their lav lavish and secure life, and they got involved into music. They started to lose their power over their lands, right? And Allah gives power to whomever he wants. Allah takes it away from who whomever he wants. So this group, the last group, Al Muawid, they promoted more philosophical understanding of Islam, which would go on influence the rest of the Europe. So they ruled Spain for a century before losing, finally losing power to Christian alliance. What happened after Spain fell into a state of turmoil in another country? I want to talk about a little bit about here why finally why this last group could not could not uh, thrive anymore okay there there are different theolo different um, assumptions and theologies one of them i found very interesting that i don't know if you guys are um, familiar with madhab like you know we we know that we have uh, different madhabs but it came from different imams that they, the way they interpreted the fiqh based on their methodology. So Imam Malik, Imam Malik's madha was prominent in North African empire. Okay. And Spain also was Maliki madha already. So when Murabitun took over Spain, they didn't have an issue. And you remember, Spain had a very unique culture. The reason I was exp explaining, the, explaining it too much or focusing it too much that you have to understand the concept that Spain had a very multicultural country. It had the native Hispanic people. It had the African people. It had the Arabs people. It had different parts of the world people were coming. So the thick over there were very unique. Uh, it was very relaxed. However, the last group, the what is this name? I keep forgetting the name. Muahid, Muahid, okay, or Al Muhad. So this group was very harsh in terms of their fiqh, but it was a very uh, philosophical in terms of their akida. It is a, it was a very complex combination. Okay, it was a very complex combination. So what happened when they? 
took over, they're like, don't do this, don't do that. You can't do this. They were like very extremist. And like they were, Akita was like Mutazilai. Remember Mutazila, the Mutazila Akida? It was more of uh, Mutazila Akida was like very philosophical. It was influenced from Greek philosophy and all these. So their Akida was in terms of believing in Allah, um, where is Allah and uh, all these uh, angels and all these, their, uh, their Akida was very philosophical. But when it comes to fiqh, they were like very hardcore. So very strange combinations. So people rebelled against it. Because in Spain, Maliki and Zahiri fiqh were very relaxed that time. And they made so many things halal. But then when Wahidun, they came, they said, oh no, this is haram, this is haram, that is haram, okay? And then Umayyads, they were living there. Arabs' descendants were living there. So they're like, oh, all of a sudden you are telling us what is haram? Uh, and you're saying, oh, we know, we are Arabs. We are, we are from Quraysh descendant. We know more than you. Also, and you're not, you're not Quraysh and you cannot be leader anyway with us. And that started a racial conflict in between the Muslims. Um, I'm gonna pause there and uh, discuss quickly about another topic, which um, I'm gonna leave it on to you guys to decide. I'm gonna just give you that a uh, little bit of idea. So there is a hadith that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the leaders has to be from Quraysh. If you remember when Abu Bakr, after the time of, uh, after, after the death of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when Ansars were discussing who should be the leader among them, then Abu Bakr, Omar and, um, Abu Bakr, Omar and, even no by Zara. So they came and they say, so Abu Bakr reminded him, them that it's a hadith from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that leaders needs to be from Quraysh. So it cannot be from the Ansar. So now based on this hadith, there's two groups in our time. So one group take the hadith literally. So they claim that, yes, it's right that the Murabituns could not be the Khalif, Ottomans could not, could not be the Khalif, Seljuks could not be the Khalif, like no one could be the Khalif because they were not from Quraysh. It is not a exactly racist comment because I think they take that meaning of the Hadith very literally and that group is adhering on it. Now, another group claims the Hadith were more contextual because Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam understanding the mindset of the people of Bedouin Arabs, he knew that no one would follow, sorry, th those Arab Bedouins would not follow anyone, anyone other than the Quraysh. So only people that give attentions or pay a little bit of, little bit of attentions were the Quraysh. So after him, the Arabian Peninsula was recommended that the leaders must be from Quraysh. So this is another group. 100 years later, 200 years later, 1,000 years later, do you think it is still necessary? We know that Islamic teaching, that they say that the most eligible person should be the leader, okay? And Islamic, Islam is not a place for discrimination based on race or nationality. We also know that, right? We know multiple examples from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's life that how he elevated uh, slaves, how he elevated uh, black slaves and all these peoples and everybody was same and equal and everybody was uh, uh, higher than another only based on piety. So how do we reconcile this hadith? Allah knows best, right? So which one is right? Uh, I'm going to leave it on to you guys. You can discuss with your parents and whatever your parents and you guys decide, that's different. However, me, I personally tend to fall into the second category that the hadith was more contextual. Once Islam was established among the Arab Bedouins and leaderships did not need it to be stay with the Quraysh only. Allah knows best. So I hope this is clear to you guys. And of course, Allah knows which is best for us and which is actually right. So the point is that we get the blessings of our life and we cannot be obvious that you know, it, uh, it, uh, that it will, we will always have the blessings in our life. Usually if Allah sends us with his blessings and we don't take care of that, it replaced by punishments, okay? And if believers are not using the, his blessings the way Allah ordered, it is usually taken away. 
Anyway, now I'm coming back to the history part again. So this, uh, this context was needed for you guys because why the last uh, Mohawids were not successful in Spain because now the fight started in between, uh, it was from the religious aspect and the leadership aspect. So they couldn't, they didn't. So Spain split it into many states at war with each other again. During this period, the Christians slowly conquered many Spanish territories. And on 12 Jamaat al-Awal, so 896, Spain fell into Christian King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. And, you know, when all of these begins to boil, they were like, a, they were able to hold it for maybe 100 years. And it had, they had racial issues, they had fiqh and Akida tensions and Muslims and Christians tensions, all these tensions were at that time. So greed and racism and it, this all over, overcome, overpowered the Muslims and next hundred years Christians started to take over the land and bribing and killing the Muslims and this is what until today you know now Spain still remained the Christian country so that's why I said at the beginning of my lecture that Spain was the only country that fell in the hand of Christian first time after the Muslims took, took it over okay so this is a picture I got it from Wikipedia that how Muslims were exp expulsion Muslim expulsion was happening when the when the Christians came. So eventually they banned. So what happened when Christians came? So eventually the Christians Christians eventually banned Islam and pressured the Muslims to convert Christianity to leave the country or be killed. So if you see the difference between when the Muslims took over and when the Christians took over. So speaking Arabic was outlawed that time. You couldn't speak Arabic. You can pray. Uh, you can pray. So prayers were banned. Muslims clothing were not allowed. Muslims in Spain still held on Islam. So the Christians forced them to leave North Africa. Muslims were not allowed to practice their religion anymore in the city when officially the Granada uh, was handed over 19, I think 1492 on January. And they couldn't even read Quran out loudly or they had to read it secretly or many fled to Morocco. So what happened eventually, some people used to practice Islam uh, secretly, but Islam is something that you can practice secretly. You can't stay secretly for long, even though they're trying to practice secretly, but then it didn't sustain, uh, retained in their kids eventually our grandkids because you know as we saw that your environment take over you your environment has a effect on you so when christians were living with the muslims in spain they were speaking arabic they were dressing like Arab muslims and they were doing all this like the muslims but then when muslims were not able to express their religion but they did those people eventually a lot of people lost their religion a lot of people were able to flee and practice somewhere else. So that is all, uh, but at the same time, so what was happening same time parallelly so far? If uh, last week we talked about the plague, uh, so the plague hit Byzantine empire, Vikings started raiding 790. This is all happening when the time of Al-Andalus, uh, Al-Andalus Islamic uh, Spain. So the church on Eastern Europe splits from the church in Western Europe, Norman conquer Sicily and Southern Italy. Last week we talked about Norman conquer England in 1066. 100 years of 100 years war begin, Black Death in Europe, the Renaissance began in Italy uh, and English peasants uh, revolt and the 100 years war ended. So this is just, uh, I found that maybe it's, it's, I will start adding adding in this list what's happening parallelly same time. So Al-Andalus was happening at the same time what was all these things happening. So this is a verse from Quran. Allah SWT says that, O oh Allah, uh, say, O oh Allah, O oh Lord of the kingdom, you give kingdom to whom you will and take kingdom away from whom you will. And you bestow honor on whom you will and bring disgrace to whom you will. In your hand lies the betterment of everyone. You are surely powerful over everything. So this is what we know that Allah SWT, he, he gives whomever he wants, uh, whomever he takes away, whomever he wants. So yeah, so when Ferdinand took over all the Spain, it was a massacre by the Christians. Muslims were given the options actually. 
if either get out of the Spain or die or convert to Christianity. So they would kill the family if they would find anyone is practicing Islam and people were secretly practicing. I think I talked about this already. Okay. Yeah. So that was all for today. Um, yeah, the Umayyads in Spain were different from the initial Umayyads. They governed justly, were educated in both Din and Dunia, and contributed greatly to the spread of knowledge. The Western world gained their knowledge of the sciences from Islamic Spain, and Spain fell when Muslims became worldly and started fighting over territories. And most people today are unaware that Muslims ever ruled Spain. Thank you so much. That was all for today.